So, um, what's your top 10 favorite pedals? Um, and I'm gonna start with a couple of cheesy ones, just because I can, um, but because I'm pretty proud of them, and it's also, there's a couple of pedals that, that, that you know, changed the company in terms of, you know, the size of, you know, our business and, you know, how, how well recognized we are in the world. And the first one is Polytune. That was really a unique pedal for us to do. Um, and it really opened up a whole new way of thinking about pedals for us. Um, and it kind of paved the way for everything we've done ever since. Uh, the second pedal is actually five pedals. I'm going to count it as one. Um, and that's the first line of Trumpkin pedals we did. So the original Flashback, Hall of Fame, uh, Corona Chorus, Vortex Flanger. But in essence, basically the Trumpkin technology, when we came up with that, I, f I think we came up with something that was quite unique and cool and something I'm pretty proud of, to be honest. And the last one I'm going to mention is Ditto Looper. Um, um, because sometimes when we do products, a lot of times we try to come up with new and weird technology and we spend, you know, sometimes years developing this stuff. So that's Tom Print, Polytune, the mesh switch and stuff like that. But it's actually interesting sometimes to just take a product and kind of look at it and go, what does this particular pedal need? And in terms of Ditto Looper, what we found out was that it didn't need any kind of unique stuff. It just needed to remove everything that everybody else had done at that point and just make it really, really simple. So there isn't anything unique in Ditto Looper in terms of technology. I think the unique thing is just, you know, kind of thinking about what people use loopers for, guitar players in particular, um, and kind of rethinking that. So I think that's the first three. Those are TC pedals. Now we get to all the other stuff. So. I'm going to mention a couple of pedals that are, you know, anybody who, who has seen me talk about Hendrix knows that I'm a big, big Hendrix fan. Um, and um, I'm going to mention a couple of pedals that he used because those are some of my go-to pedals and I pretty much always have them on my boards. Um, so first one is the Wawa pedal. Um, and, you know, even though there's a bunch of different ones and I use a Right now I use a very expensive esoteric one from a company called uh, Real McCoy. Um, you could, I mean, I'd be totally happy with just using a Dunlop Crybaby. Um, I would say, you know, just the whole bar in general is, you know, that's a beautiful, beautiful pedal and, you know, such an expressive way to, to, to be able to play using that. Uh, so I guess that's four. Um, then we have the Fuzz Face. I'm a big Fuzz fan and I love all sorts of different fuzz pedals, but I mean, I'm definitely partial to uh, to the old Germanium fuzz pedals and the fuzz face in, in particular. Um, I like the way it sounds with, you know, either a cranked amp or, you know, just some kind of overdrive after. Not too distorted, just a little bit. The way those two sounds, the fuzz and the overdrive, mixed together gives you such a beautiful tone, you know. If you have never heard Hendrix or um, Eric Johnson, even though he uses a silicon fuzz, you know, that's pretty much the tone I go for. And I love the fact that you can roll down the tone and get a clean sound that way. And actually, some of the best clean sounds I've gotten ever is actually having a, a very light overdrive and a fuzz face and just rolling the, uh, the volume up down it just creates this really cool clean sound that has something that just the clean sound of the amp by itself doesn't always have. So, is that five? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so we get to number six and that's the, uh, the Univibe. Um, I don't know why I love it so much, it's just that combination of, uh, you know, the swirliness, but not in that kind of classic chorus -y kind of thing. You know, it has a little bit more balls and a little bit more of a psychedelic edge to me that I really like. Um, and I also like, you know, the old Hendrix trick of baby. Basically just kicking on the fuzz uh, and kicking on the Octavia, which we'll get to in a minute, and then the, uh, the vibe. Uh, and, the, you know, that combination where it sounds like the whole world just <laughs> explodes. I, I dig that a lot. And then we get to number six, which is the... Uh, is it six? It is six. Um, which is the Octavia pedal, which is a really weird pedal, really odd sound, but I like the quirkiness of it because you, you know, it's the type of pedal you buy it, and you know, 
if I would have bought that as the first pedal I ever bought, I would have had no idea how to use it. I'd probably have sold it again. But you've really got to know how to use it. It works best with single coils. I find strats work best. It works best in the neck position. It works best if you play above the 12th fret. It's so, you know, it's such a weird, weird pedal. But, you know, when you use it right, there's nothing else like it. So that was number seven. It means we have three left. Um, and I'd have to say, in terms of overdrives, I know there's a ton of different ones out there, and I switch between all different ones. Um, I like, you know, some that are clean and pristine and, you know, smooth. I like all different kinds, but there's a certain thing that I like about Tube Screamer style pedals uh, that really speaks to me. Um, I think they work for a number of different uh, applications. I like them into, you know, for the old Steve Ray Wong stuff. Um, just like a clean fendering with a strat and a two screen. It's, you know, it's hard to beat for certain sounds. But I actually also like it for metal stuff because, uh, which I also play a lot because when I have my rhythm sound, which is kind of scooped, I'm lacking a bit of mids. I can step on a two screamer to get a bit more distortion and crank up the mids a bit. Uh, so that's number eight. Uh, now we have two left, and now it's getting a little bit more tricky. Um, I would have to say that reverb in general, and I really like the Hall of Fame, which I mentioned earlier, but reverb in general is, is something I started to use not too long ago, um, but I find it to be become more and more a you know an essential part of my sound. I almost feel naked with it without playing through a reverb pedal. Um, and whether that comes from the Amber or Hall of Fame or some of the other really cool reverbs are out there, you know, it, you know, obviously I'm partial to the Hall of Fame. Uh, so that leaves one pedal. Um, and I have to say that, yeah, that's tricky. What would, there's so many cool pedals out there. These days, and this is actually something that's brand new, I, you know, I, right now I play a lot of metal, um, and I don't use a lot of effects for that. I use a delay, and I use an overdrive, and a, and a tuner, uh, which we already we kind of have that covered already. Um, but I don't use a lot of effects in terms of faces and flanges and stuff like that. But when I do stuff in the studio, I like to add harmonized lines to, you know, to parts of my solos. Um, so our brand new quintessence pedal is on my board, and I have a hard time seeing me getting rid of that because um, um, it allows me to get the sounds that I typically only get in the studio in a live situation, which I haven't been able to do before. So that's the ten. Wow, that's a lot of talking. Sorry about that. So let's go for the next one. So the most precious musical gear I have in terms of value, and probably also in terms of you know sentimental attachment, I guess, is my. 68 uh, Marshall Plexi that I bought not too long ago, a couple of years ago, and I've been wanting one ever since I started playing guitar, and I got that and a matching cap from the same year with original 25 uh, greenbacks, Celestian greenbacks in it, so, you know, I'm pretty damn happy about that. Uh, so that's that. Uh, to you guys, Danish guys from TC, possess alien technology and use it for your pedals. Um, I guess the secrets are on the back. Yes, we really are from Alpha Centauri, and uh, you know, I have a third eye in my back. <laughs> no, I think, I think we have a, the team at TC, uh, not me, not just me at least, the entire guitar team is a really tight-knit bunch of group, uh, a bunch of guys who, you know, who have a tendency to come up with really cool stuff, especially if, or weird stuff, uh, especially if beers are involved. And luckily, we're in a position where we actually have, you know, the time and, just, you know, not me for sure, but some of the guys there actually have the technical know-how to turn some of those ideas into life. Not, the majority of them, not at all. We have tons of cool ideas that we don't know how to, you know, kind of, solved yet from a technical point of view, but you know, we try to, so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Are you an alien? Nah, I'm really, really tall, so I might have, you know, you could have seen me as, as like a, like, as like weird cast in like a Men in Black movie, but no, I'm actually 100% pure Danish. <laughs> Whether that makes me an alien or not, I don't know. Um, if you had to make a pedal board with just TC pedals, what pedals would you choose? Okay, so for this, I'm going to pick my metal band because that's, you know, that's what, um, that's what I'm actually using as a pedal board aside from, you know, when I noodle at home. So I would have a polytune on that thing. I would have a 
I would have a Mojo Mojo, I would have Spark Booster on there, I would have a Mojo Mojo Overdrive, I would have the Quintessence, and I would have a Flashback Delay, and a Hall of Fame Reverb. And that would be it. And if I were to use it at home as well, I would most definitely have a Ditto Luba 2, because um, then I could play with myself. Um, what music bands uh, for albums do you currently listen to? Oh God, I listen to a, so much diverse music, it's pretty crazy. Um, of new stuff, I really like Joey Landreth. If you haven't checked him out, he's amazing. Um, I really like the new uh, Doyle Bramble's second album that came out, I think, this year or last year. Um, that's really, really good. Um, I like, let's see, Blake Mills is incredible. He came out with an album, I think, in 2015 that I really like. Um, so that's one part of it. The other part is the metal stuff. Um, there are some crazy good bands out there. I like I like a lot of the old stuff, so I like you know I like my Panteras, I like At the Gates, I like In Flames, I like Meshuga, I like Meshuga a lot. So the new album Meshuga is you know that's really good, and that's actually produced by a good friend of mine who lives in the same city that uh, the TC's in, in my hometown. Um, so I think that's a few of them. So you have the rootsy guys on one side, and then you have the metal guys on the other side, and I like I like both, and I'm sure I forgot a bunch of stuff, um, but there you go. Let's see. What can we expect next from TC? Well, I think the next thing you can expect is that today is Tuesday and, and on Thursday we're officially announcing Quintessence Harmonizer, which I just talked about. So that's the next thing to expect. You could also expect a couple of new pedals coming out in a fairly short amount of time. That actually quite a few new pedals coming out in a fairly short amount of time that I'm really proud of and I'm really excited about. And then around name time next year, we have a lot of stuff in a lot of different areas coming out that we are working hard on right now. But you know, as it is with you know, making products like this, you never know exactly when they're done. You have an idea and you have a goal, but things sometimes things tend to you know, drag out a bit. So I hope we'll have a bunch of cool stuff out at NAM, we'll definitely have something, but how much, I'm not quite sure of yet, and I can't tell you guys about it, but uh, I'm excited about it, so I hope you guys will be too. Um, and any advice on, or message for all the pedal nerds out there? I think my main advice is, and I'm, you know, I'm totally guilty of that too, myself, um, is play a lot of guitar. All the pedal stuff is really fun and cool, and you know, I definitely tend to get caught up in the whole, you know, worrying more about my gear and spending more time, you know, oogling new guitars and new pedals, um, and sometimes actually forgetting to play music. But that's what it's all about. And if you can find a piece of gear that will inspire you to play music, write a riff, you know, just you know, play a song for your kid or your girlfriend, or make something on YouTube, whatever it is. That's what it's really all about. It's all about music and all the other stuff. It's basically just means to do that. So that's my advice.